Hey everyone, Chang here and welcome to my channel. Now, this problem right here looks eerily similar. It's actually the same problem that I used when I was going through long division in another video. I'm going to leave a link in the description down below. Today I want to go over another tool that is, I guess you could say, usually taught side by side with long division. Now this, like I said, is a wonderful tool. It helps you do long division actually very quickly. It's actually called synthetic division. Now, the way it works is actually a little odd, and I feel like it's a good procedure just to know so that you can go through this a lot quicker, but I personally prefer like long division because I can see what I'm doing and I understand every step of the way. Now, this one, it's a format that takes some time getting used to. So first and foremost, in order to do synthetic division, you looked at every single one of these coefficients. Coefficient is the number in front of the variables. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write it all down. The first one, the first is three. The second one is negative two. The third one is negative 13. And the fourth one is 10. Notice I excluded all the different variables, but I just wrote all the coefficient right next to each other in the order that you see them. Then afterwards, in order to do synthetic division, the format is this. You look at the bottom. You look at this number in particular. Now, there's two ways that I've seen people sort of explain how to memorize this. The first one is you look at the entire number and you basically write the opposite. So in this case, this is a negative two, so you would just write two. The other one is that they usually say there's a minus sign and you take whatever number it is. If it happens to be plus, that means there's an invisible negative sign, which, uh, it works. I would rather say just do the opposite because that's just a little easier to realize and memorize. Now, since this is a negative two, we're doing the opposite. We're going to do a positive two. So I'm going to write it right here in red so you guys can actually see that, right? And then they put a little, like, I guess you could say half box just to separate them. Now, in order to actually carry out synthetic division, the process is actually fairly simple. You just go one at a time. And it's a little different because you're doing, uh, I get, you're not really subtracting. Let me show you. So here you have three, nothing here. So you just bring this straight down. Let me draw an arrow to show that you guys are going straight down. And then you have a three here. The next thing you do is you multiply this number and the, the result of this number, right? So that one is going to be six. So technically six right here. And then you just add it straight down. So see, notice the difference. Instead of subtracting like you normally would, you're adding it straight down. So it's going to be negative two plus six, which is going to be four. Then what you're going to do next is you're still going to get this number and then you're going to multiply it, and you guys can guess that the result is going to be here and then you just keep going. So two times four is eight. So you're going to put eight right here. Then you have negative 13 plus eight, which is gonna be negative five. Now, two times negative five is negative 10. Then you add these guys down and it gives you zero. That's what we want. If this is zero, that means there's no remainder. So wh what does this mean though? Well, here's the thing. The other, we start off with a cube function. Now, if we divide it by a monomial, it's gonna go down. Instead of a cubic function, it's gonna be a quadratic. So. Immediately, we can see this. This instead of x cubed, which is original, now this is x squared, and we can just go down. This must be for the x. This is the constant, or sometimes they would shorthand it say c, right? So in other words, the end result after you divide it with synthetic division is gonna be three x squared plus four x, could be minus five or plus a negative five. And this would be your final result. Notice that this is actually a lot quicker than long division. But once again, long division, conceptually, you can see it easier. Now, this next one is also seen in the previous video. Remember this, when we were doing long division, we actually had to include a lot of the placeholder. When you're doing synthetic division, we have to do the same thing. The placeholder doesn't change. So this x cubed plus eight is technically x cubed plus zero x squared. That's why you don't see it because anything times zero is just, you know, zero plus zero x and then plus eight. There we go. Okay, so these two are the ones that are basically invisible missing, right? And the rest is still the same, x plus two. So 
After you do this, now you can carry out synthetic division. If you don't include this, the synthetic division won't work. You're going to screw yourself up and it's going to be super confusing. So let's look at this. Now we look at all the coefficient and we write it in a row. Well, in this case, what's the coefficient in front of x cubed? There's no number, right? Well, technically there is. Remember that every time there's a, there's a variable with no number in front, there's always an invisible one because one times that variable is just a variable itself, right? So there it is. Now we're going to write all the coefficient. We have one, zero, zero, eight. Okay. Now remember the next thing we have to do is we have to look at this number. Well, that's a positive two, but for synthetic division, we actually have to do the opposite. So in this case, instead of plus two, we're actually looking at negative two right here. Okay. Now, what do we do? Well, in this case, once again, here we just start off, we bring this down. Okay, then we start multiplying. One times negative two, that's negative two. So let's just write negative two right here. Zero plus negative two is just negative two. Now, negative two times negative two, that's four. So we have a four right here. Zero plus four is just gonna be four. Now, negative two times four is gonna be negative eight. So negative eight, add the straight down, zero. Great. That means that there's no remainder. That's what we want, right? So in this case, once again, originally we were at a cubic function. So if we're dividing by a monomial, that means it has to go basically one exponent down. So instead of cubic, we're actually looking at quadratics. So this must be the x squared, this must be the x, and this must be the constant. Okay? So in the end, when we write it, it's gonna be one times x squared, which is just x squared, negative two, x or minus 2x and then plus 4 and that would be the end result. Once again, a lot faster than long division. All right, let's look at one more problem. Here we have x squared plus 3x plus 4 divided by x minus 1. Now, what we're going to do is once again, we're going to look at this. Is there any missing placeholder? No, right? You have the square, then you have the regular, and then you have the constant. So we're just going to get all the coefficient and then we're going to write it out. Remember, this is an invisible one. So that's our coefficient there. It's going to be one, three, and four. Okay. Afterwards, we look at the number at the bottom and we take the opposite, negative one. Well, the opposite of negative one is just one. So we're going to do our little half box here and we're going to put one. Okay, cool. Let's do that. And then now we start bringing it down. Well, one, we're going to bring it down. One times one is just one. Excellent. Add these guys together is going to be four. One times four is going to be four. So it's right here. And then when you add these guys together, it's eight. That's a bit of a problem because guess what? This is not zero. That means there's a remainder. Other than that, everything is simple. We have a square. We divide it by monomial. So instead of being a square, the result must be starting with x to the first power. This is going to be x. This must be the constant. And since we have that eight, that is our remainder. So in this case, it's just going to be x or one x plus four. And remember, with remainder, what we're going to do is we're going to put the remainder on top divided by whatever we were dividing it by. Now, even though we did synthetic division and all this crazy nonsense, technically we're dividing by x minus one. So it's going to be x minus one right here. And so this would be our final answer. Now, this is just a side note. While I was filming this video, I was thinking about like, oh man, it's so weird that when we're doing long division, everything is sort of subtracting, but when we're doing synthetic division, everything is sort of adding. And I understand that adding is a lot easier than subtracting, but why, why was that the case? And don't quote me on this, because this is just sort of an idea that I'm just forming right now, and it might just be exactly it. I haven't explored synthetic division nearly as enough, just because I, it, it's never been more than just a tool for me, right? I understood long division, it made sense to me, and I just kept doing that. And I just use synthetic division when it's, you know, time is of the essence, and then I had to do it quickly. Now, I was thinking about this again, and this is the first problem, and then when we were doing long division, right, we just wrote it all out, 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus 13x plus 10. And then we did this whole thing where we start figuring out what is multiplied into what. And then we started subtracting, right? So for example, the first step was, all right, well, x times something is going to be x 
cube. So that's x squared, and it has to be 3x squared to get make sure that it cancels this guy out. So we have 3x cubed, and then 3x squared times this is going to be what? Uh, what is that? Uh, minus 6x squared. And then you do the opposite, right? Just like we would do in any regular division problem. And then this cancels, which is great. Then this one becomes negative 8x squared and so on and so forth, right? But when we were doing synthetic division, we ended up adding, we're like, what, what the heck? So when we were looking at synthetic division, we once again, we get all the coefficient. And I understand that we're trying to make sure that the variable doesn't get in the way, that the whole point of synthetic division is to simplify it so that the variable is not causing any confusion. And then afterwards, I think the key is gonna be this right here. This idea that we look at the number at the bottom. Remember, we're not worried about the variables all that much, but when we look at the number at the bottom, right, we took the opposite. And just by taking the opposite, I think that is the key for that. Because we take the opposite and then instead of working with a minus two, which in this case, it would have been minus two, we're working with two. So since we're working with two, technically what we're doing is we're getting, I don't want us to get rid of, but basically already doing all the subtraction because since we're taking the opposite, we're technically adding, right? So instead of, doing the negative two here and then subtracting again, we are already are changing it so that we're just adding it up. So if we find the opposite, we're doing all the subtraction at once, hence we're adding. Now, once again, this is not a full-fledged idea, but it just sort of occurred to me while I was filming that that might be the cost. I'm gonna have to look into this a little further. And well, if you guys want an explanation, I wanna say this is a tentative explanation on why synthetic division and long division, even though they seem to behave drastically different, one is subtracting, one is adding, they might actually be the same in terms of just the fact that in each and every one of the step of long division, you're subtracting. But if you take the opposite, right, you're technically just adding. So you got rid of all that whole subtracting thing and made it adding, which makes it easier. And I understand that because, well, guess what? Synthetic division was designed to make things easier. And no matter what, Adding is always easier than subtracting. So with that, at the end of the video, realize this. Synthetic division is a wonderful tool. It might be a little murky on how some of the things work, and I do have that initial theory on why it works. I'm not entirely sure. But other than the fact, it does work. It is a wonderful tool. If time is of the essence, if you're really crunched and you just need to do it really quickly, don't waste your time with long division, right? You can save so much time just by doing synthetic division. And I strongly recommend that to be the case. But of course, remember, long division is good, it keeps you organized, and it helps you conceptually see what exactly you are doing, right? Synthetic division, not so much, very quick, very useful. If you don't need to show your basic understanding of this and you just need to get the problem done, go for this, that's your best bet. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you find it helpful. See you in the next one.